Uh, thank you. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm very excited to share our research. No training herders, faster training agnostic attacks to inform your typing. Uh, this work was done at the University of South Florida, and it's a joint work with Dr. Uh, Mark Watt, uh, Dr. Yao Liu, uh, Shang Xin, Dr. Zhu, and uh, Dr. What happens? And uh, Dr. Dr. Zhu. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Typing uh, where a keystroke plays a very important role in our daily life. Uh, we may import sensitive information such as classified documents or private emails. Meanwhile, emoji research has identified a new class of attacks that can eavesdrop the keystrokes in a non-invasive way. Non-invasive, as the name implies, means no keylogger or other malware is required to affect the target computer. The common idea is Pressing a key causes starter environmental impacts unique to that key. And however, these uh, attacks uh, also share a common weakness, namely they require a training phase. Now let's examine such uh, attack examples and discuss why training is a herder. First is vibration-based attack. Typing on a keyboard may cause vibrations on the surface where the keyboard rests. The accelerometer of a nearby phone or tablet can capture such vibrations. Uh, with training, an attacker can um, uh, establish a relationship between the vibration and the keystroke. And the next is acoustic signal-based attack. It has been observed that um, Typing can produce sounds unique to each key. So similarly, attacker can utilize microphones to capture these songs and extract features to build a classifier. And next is what is signal-based attack. Like previous two categories, attacker can utilize a training phase to build a classifier to correlate each key drop with corresponding wireless signal distortion. And during the attack phase, unknown disturbances uh, will be uh, compared with those recorded in the training phase to determine which key is pressed. Then why is training a herder? First, obviously, like training requires the knowledge of what key is pressed. However, in most cases, it is very difficult for the attacker to know such information. Also, uh, most users are in full con physical control of their keyboards. Any time that the keyboard is moved, any previous uh, training efforts become useless. And also, a user may change uh, their uh, typing, uh, his or her typing behaviors, like heaviness of hand. So training must be conducted very frequently to cope with these changes. In conclusion, um, to make those non-invasive keystroke eavesdropping attack work in real situations, uh, training is a hurdle. So to think about this problem, statistical methods provide us a solution intuitively. Um, that all input text of large size will have a distribution of letter frequencies that is close to the typical distribution of English letters as shown in this slide. Since an uh, environmental disturbance is associated with the key, by analyzing the frequencies of observed disturbances, the attacker can determine the associated keys. Uh, for example, like uh, English letter E is the most uh, often used, thus the, disturb the most frequently observed disturbance is likely to cause by pressing the letter E. However, this typical distribution of English letters is obtained using a large amount of text. However, that the distribution uh, within a very small input may not be the same. 
the mismatch between the real distribution and typical distribution is unpredictable. Then we ask a question. It is quite possible to develop a tech within a short time. Our work answers this question, yes. Instead of using probabilistic statistics, we analyze the self-contained structures of words, which can be immediately observed by pressing a single key. Let me give you an example here. Like a user types an English word sense, S-E-N-S-E, the attacker will observe five disturbances. The first one and the fourth one will be similar. The second one and the last one appear alike, since each pair both are generated by typing the same key. And due to wireless signals have those advantages, and we utilize wireless signal to monitor the environmental disturbances, and specifically, we calculate the channel state information to quantify the disturbance. Normally, the transmitter sends uh, a public signal at the receiver side with the receive signal and public signal uh, channel state information can be estimated as shown in this equation. After discussing our motivation, now I began to introduce our attack design. We consider our general attack uh, scenario a uh, attacker utilizes a customized transmitter and the receiver to launch the attack. The transmitter creates a radio environment. The receiver uh, estimates the channel state information. And then a pre-processing step is utilized to divide CSI time series into CS samples. Uh, here, a CS sample refers to an individual segment corresponding to the action of pressing a key. Since this pre-processing step utilized in our attack is the same with that in other uh, wallets key straw it was dropping attacks, so I'm not going to repeat details here. So after that, unlike existing methods, our attack utilizes three very important steps to inform key strokes. First is CSI word group generation. It's uh, utilized to convert CSI samples into groups corresponding to each typed word. As shown in this figure, four CSI samples form a CSI word group. And it involves three steps, namely classification, sorting, and word segmentation. For classification, we calculate the dis distance between CSI samples to denote the similarity. To facilitate the presentation, we utilize a circle to denote the, uh, uh, there's a, a CSI sample here. A very small distance between CSI samples uh, means that they may come from typing the same key and they will be put in the same set. And on the contrary, if their uh, distance is large, it means that they deviate from each other and these may come from a different uh, key and will be put into a new set and this process will go on and the outcome of classification will be multiple sets, each consisting similar CSI samples. The sorting aims to identify the CSI samples uh, that is caused by pressing the space key. This is because space key is uh, almost always separate English words and we expect that the CSI samples corresponding to the space key will appear more frequently than other uh, CSI samples. Thus, we also we uh, like sort those sets according to size and associate the space key with the largest set. That means that all CSI samples within this set are caused by the typing of spacebar. And if this association does not work, we will try the next largest one. After the space associate uh, CSI word uh, uh, sample is identified, we began word segmentation. As shown in this figure, that everything between successive uh, space associated CSI samples will group together. See the CSI word groups, and they will be the input of dictionary demodulation which will convert 
those the SI word groups into corresponding English words. Yeah, we finally achieved that. Then as shown here that uh, this figure, we can see that uh, three CSI word groups will be uh, directly uh, de demoted into upper, head, and old. Now I began with uh, how to develop a feature uh, to narrow down candidates. And we will also discuss how to apply this feature as well as handle other situations. So for feature extraction, like without knowing uh, exact letters in a, in a word, but we have um, uh, a CSI sample for each letter, right? So we know the number of letters and we know um, whether any of the letters are repeated. So intuitively, we have two features. One is length and the other is repetition. However, rep repetition only shows the results of repeated results without their um, position information. To integrate all available information, we develop a new data structure, namely inter-element relationship matrix, which represents the structure of a CSI word group or an English letter. Here, for a vector x sub 1 to x sub n, each denotes a CSI sample or a letter. We get the corresponding matrix as shown here. If x sub i is similar or same with x sub j, we set the corresponding value to 1. Otherwise, it would be zero. With the extract feature, we began to divide the words in the dictionary into many sets here. To quantify their distinguishability, we utilized our, we utilized our new metric uh, called uniqueness rate. And the higher uh, this value is, means we can achieve better positioning. And this table shows that for relationship uh, matrix, the unique rate is much larger than the other two features. Um, now I utilize a simple example to illustrate how to demodulate CSI word groups. Suppose there is a dictionary uh, W and it has those words here, right? And a user types two English words, apple and pen. For the first the CSI word group, uh, we generate corresponding uh, relationship matrix R sub one, and due to the second and the third um, uh, CSI samples are both uh, by generated by the typing the same letter, we set the corresponding value as one. In the second step, we will compute the relation matrix for each word in the dictionary and compare it with R sub one, and we get the candidates upper and offer because they share the same structure. So similar for the second CSI word group, we get the candidates as shown here. Now uh, we combine both uh, CSI word groups and to form a longer one and corresponding new relationship matrix R sub new. And the candidates for this two word sequence will be well formed as shown here. And similarly, we generate the relation matrix for each new candidate uh, in T and compare with R sub new. And finally, we get the result, Apple Pen. That's the correct answer. And due to time elimination, I'm not going to uh, say, uh, describe the detailed uh, joint demodulation, but I do want to emphasize that if a CSI word pool group cannot be demodulated at the first phase, it will be added into an undemodulated set and wait until alphabet matching. So alphabet matching means that the mapping between CSI sample and English letter is established. So this mapping can apply to other CSI sample, uh, CSI word groups, as well as those in undemodulated uh, set. As shown here, uh, with alphabet matching, we can directly demodulate the English words did and old three letters in the second type of word. Also, now you may be very interested in how your algorithm uh, handle uh, errors, right? We consider three abnormal situations. First, a wireless channel noise uh, may cause CSI classification errors. Leading a CSI sample for the latter may not be correctly classified in the corresponding set. 
And second is that a user may misspell some words and also will utilize uh, some non-alphabetic characteristics. And we think that all three situations will cause two uh, consequences. And one is that we cannot find candidates. So this one is quite simple because we can simply uh, put this CSI uh, stamper, uh, word stamper into the undemoted set and wait for alphabet uh, matching. And the other is complex because it can successfully demodulate uh, with invalid words, but we can observe cascading discovery failures. And this observation actually provides our uh, solution. Why? Because if we find that a uh, CSI word group is successfully demodulated, but we will find a, cons a consecutive a discovery failures in the following, then we need to come back and put that CSI word group into the undemodulated uh, stats. Now I began to uh, introduce, uh, present our experimental results. Our attack prototype system consists of wireless transmitter and receiver. Uh, each node is a USRP X300 connected with a personal computer. The receiver estimates channel and info the keystrokes. On the other hand, the user will operate a, a, a computer, a desktop computer with a wide standard keyboard. And first I will utilize a simple example recovery to demonstrate uh, uh, the info performance. We randomly select five sentences from representative English ones from the Harvard sentences. And we can see we got two candidates and they differ only by one word. The second word can be either um, box or boy. And we also know that there are five words. They are not in the dictionary, but with alphabet matching, we can still uh, successfully demodulate them. To quantify the it was dropping accuracy, we utilized uh, a metric word recovery ratio, which is the ratio between the number of successfully recovered words to the number of total input words. And we utilized uh, 100 articles uh, randomly selected from several websites. And uh, for single article recovery here, we can see that at the beginning, the word recovery ratio is very low. And with more inputs, we can see that the ratio fluctuates and uh, uh, great, uh, increases greatly. Uh, this is because that the newly typed word may or may not identify it correctly in the candidates. And when the mapping between CSI sample and the latter is established, and so we can see that the ratio will be remain at a very high level. To test the impact of CSI sample classification errors, we artificially introduced errors into the groupings. And we also discussed the uh, effects of dictionary size. And as shown in this figure, we can see that um, um, with fewer errors, and we get uh, like we get a higher uh, ratio and uh, we get the same result for using a larger dictionary. And for overall uh, recovery accuracy, and we can see that for more than 82% of all articles, uh, the achieved uh, water recovery ratio is larger than 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 um, when the number of input balls is larger than 27 and 42. And of course, our method do not have training. Uh, the complexity is naturally of interest. And since that the comparison of relation matrix is dominant, we count uh, the numbers. And so this figure shows the average comparison number for newly typed words uh, on a log scale. And we see at the beginning, the uh, comparison number increased very big, uh, very greatly, and well soon um, decrease to a low level with more imports. There our uh, research target uh, letter inference. We also show the uh, effects for password inference. Uh, we utilize this leakage uh, data set and, so, and we found that most of the users actually utilize a very a big portion uh, of the passwords. Uh, we, we utilize letters uh, as a big portion uh, in their passwords. And this is the result. And actually this 
uh, result is helpful for our attack because by launching our attack, we can see that breaking a nine character password is reduced to getting one to five non-letter uh, characters and the passport entropy or uh, passport strength is greatly redu re reducted. And in conclusion, uh, we identify a new type of keystroke eavesdropping attack without training. And we create a joint demodulation algorithm. And we implement this attack and as well as validate its impact. And thank you for your listening. Hi. Um, has anyone looked into using uh, deep learning, like a uh, LSTM model, for this? Uh, so for the for for this research, you mean? For the uh, for the it was dropping the keystrokes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the LSTMs are very good at this sort of sequential type of thing where you're trying to recover words and so on. So um, so it's well, uh, yeah. I I think. Uh, uh, I, I need to go over that. So I wonder for that one, do you need uh, a lot of data? For I mean, usually, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. So, so then the difference between that method with our method is our, we do not need um, a lot of data, so. Okay. Yeah. Hi, a nice talk. Mm -hmm. uh, two questions. Gotcha. The first one is, I saw you use CN in your evaluation. Uh, excuse uh, me? CN. Uh, saying yes, the uh, piece, yeah. Could you show us more detailed uh, model of this CN? Uh, yeah, it's uh, for about the thing in this that we uh, in our paper we have the reference uh, about that that news uh -huh. that is just uh, the uh, uh, the content the for the because we want to uh, discuss the impact of our work so we select randomly select articles mm -hmm. from online uh, from several uh, websites and uh, uh, that we that figure is just to show one example we utilize a piece of CNN news for demonstration the results. You mean CNN the website, not CNN the deep learning model of that figure? Yeah, yeah, that is CNN website, a oh. news on CNN. Sorry, oh, sorry for the confusion. Sorry, sorry. Not, not, not for that, yeah. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Another question is, I saw you use a magnetization in your methodology. Uh, uh, I was wondering the, how, how long is for uh, each uh, segmentation? Segmentation? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, quite honestly, because our method they actually have two segmentation parts, but oh. that difference. First, the segmentation is yeah. in the pre-processing part. Yes. Uh, that is the same with existing methods. Mm -hmm. And that, that segmentation is just to determine the starting point and ending point of the typing. And this other segmentation is how we get the CS samples yes. and to divide into a group of corresponding typing uh, word or word. So, like a, yeah. a broad segmentation yeah my, my question is uh, I, I want to answer uh, if I type very fast can you recognize uh, if uh, I type very fast so the segmentation uh, chance is very short so good it's, yes it's enough yeah enough inf information for you to yes yes because we said the, the the main point for the second segmentation is because no matter how fast you type mm -hmm. you need a space bar to yes. connect two words yes. so basically the second segmentation is based on the space bar so we can still know that you type very fast the 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 the, the, the middle between two parts will be the typing will be your um, own word like that okay thank, thank you for your you. question thank you Hi. Hi. Uh, Stephen Savage, Juicy San Diego. Uh, very nice stuff. I'm curious, the one thing I didn't quite understand, what is the <laughs> operational scenario where someone is eavesdropping on the keyboard but isn't going to get a lot of content that you're targeting? Like, when does this happen? The, the application scenario? Yeah, because so in the original, you know, Tiger paper, they said, yeah, you can you record next to someone's keyboard, you get all this stuff, and then you can train and so forth. Mm -hmm. But you've optimized it in case you don't have a lot of content. But I'm wondering, yeah. When does that happen? Yeah, so that's very uh, uh, good question. It's about because actually uh, for our work, we actually do the experiment to like to recruit volunteers to let them to type uh, their content. They select, not we select the articles, right? So the 
to, uh, in terms of the applications, is normally that you will write emails like somewhere or short emails, and you will write some comments like that. So not we do not need to, uh, a lot of data. So basically, like mobile for, eavesdropping, like you're going to a cafe, you just yeah. want to get that person all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's right. Okay, that's what yeah. I was trying to. Do. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.